Right, folks, you'll see Jaguar going up the hill, the Jaguar cars, Art of Performance Tour. They're taking a couple of celebrities and invited guests up the hill just to get the experience of what the hill climb is all about. So uh, in between the heats, the Jag experience will go up. They've also got uh, two, uh, during the day, two Jaguar owners that have bought Jaguars, the XFs, the F-Types, and uh, they've been uh, offered the opportunity to take their own personal cars up the hill climb. It's actually quite funny to watch the passenger sitting with his phone, it pulled away and he nearly broke his nose. He has a keen passenger, lady's got her gloves on, her jacket on, the works, but watch the phone, the phone's going to move back as she pulls in. Should be a goodie. I've got the phone here, you can see the screen. The phone over there. Oh, she did it. <laughs> Cars today, the petrol heads are out, and so are the cars on steroids. And the drivers that pilot them up the 1.9 kilometer long Somalia Hill here in Meisner in the Eastern Cape province of South Africa. Hello, everyone. I'm Alan Gibbons. Today, there are three classes road going that's the saloon cars, then the supercars. Class B is the modified saloons and single seaters, and sports cars makes up class C. And uh, there are 84 competitors. They have been uh, busy with qualify, uh, rather practice, practice one finished a little while ago, practice two has also just been completed and then practice three is underway. We also have practice four, lunch and a lunchtime entertainment which I can tell you is something you don't want to miss, the Jaguar stunt drivers are here and uh, there's even one of them who rides the car on two wheels while he stands outside it. It is spectacular to see. Practice five will be around about two o'clock. And qualifying round then one at three qualifying round two at four and then tomorrow morning we start off bright breezy and early at nine o'clock it's the morning warm-up rounds qualifying round three starts at ten o'clock all the way down to after lunch where it is the class final whittled down to 48 cars the road and the supercar shootout 10 cars single seaters and sports car shootout 10 as well and then following that the modified saloon car shootout also 10 cars and that should be round about four o'clock and then we'll find out who is indeed the king of the hill here at Samola as brought to you by Jaguar. 
Well, it's uh, very nice to have Fani Scores with us, who's the man who's been down there speaking to a whole lot of drivers. You would have seen him on our uncommentated, if there is such a phrase, live streaming so far. Fani, good morning. Nice to have you with us. Uh, what's the feeling like out there this morning? Uh, thank you, Arnold. It's uh, completely different out there today. Yep. Uh, the classics yesterday uh, completely uh, mellowed and uh, happy faces. Today all the guys came out and uh, definitely more serious. And also I think uh, as we stated at the top there, the petrol heads are out today. The real hard line guys who just absolutely love the smell and the sound and the look of these babies. Absolutely. Obviously uh, today we have a lot more spectators out here. And uh, while uh, that uh, Alpha Julia is going up the hill there from the Penta Motor Group, uh, good to see somebody uh, or, or, the, or the Alpha is making a return to uh, the, the hill climb as well. Arnie. Well, uh, it is interesting that you talk about that and you've uh, brought it up, so we may just as well um, talk about that. Uh, your group, the Penta Group and those Alphas, just uh, talk to us a bit about them because they're making, I, I don't want to use the term, but I can't put it any other way, they're making quite a splash. They are definitely. Uh, the two drivers, uh, Going up the hill, uh, there's the second one, that is uh, Peter Potgieter, uh, um, and uh, yeah, the cars are definitely making a, a lot of noise down in the Nasna area. Well, lots of folks, of course, in this part of the world would have a great love for the Alphas in particular, so this is the start of the next qualifying round and Rechard Rutz was the man who has clocked 46.047 seconds so far but uh, in the previous practice we saw an absolutely blistering run by Andre Besaidner just under 38 seconds a brand new mark up the hill in uh, that unbelievably beautiful Nicholson McLaren NME of his that's the GR55 and uh, it's the 3.8 litre eight cylinder car it was a spectacular run yeah, Andre is probably one of the nicest guys uh, out here um, so humble and uh, yeah, obviously making a, a huge statement with that run up the Arnie. He'll be the one to catch then and uh, of course he is uh, the man you could almost call him a co-owner of the Samola Hill because uh, the Samola Hill climb has belonged to him. He's won it several times and uh, it's great to see. I have a feeling that by tomorrow he'll go even faster. So you've spoken to a whole lot of the guys. What's the feeling like about the road surface at the moment? Yeah, obviously a lot of talk about uh, still being very cold. Um, not a lot of rubber on the road at the moment. So definitely as the day heats up, the road surface and uh, race surface will also heat up and uh, the guys will be going up the, up the hill even faster. Yeah, we're just edging up to 12 o'clock uh, Central African time now and uh, the hottest time of the day is still coming. And it takes a little longer to get hot at this time of the year due to the fact that around about uh, 6 o'clock this morning it was only 9 degrees. So uh, the road surface and the start area also takes a while but they are laying down as you can see there lots of rubber on the road. And that affects the start as well of course later in the day when it cools down again and the rubber starts cooling down where they've laid it down at the start. That uh, also really changes your traction doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, I think uh, the start of this hill climb is obviously one of the most uh, important facets and uh, yeah, the guys not getting off to a good start will never be able to make up that time up the hill. You give away half a second and it's all gone. This uh, is that beautiful looking car. Uh, it's an absolute stunner and uh, that was uh, Udo de Burgers we saw. This is Marc Gronier. Again, a, a superb list of performances for young Marc. And he's about to hit the road in the Jaguar 5 litre and uh, that's the RS5 or RS6 rather. He's just gone. Race car number 66. That's Davi Ulefir in another of the Jags. That's the F-Type Coupe SVR. That's an eight-cylinder car. That thing just sounds absolutely awesome. I was standing right there at the start line when this car went up for its uh, previous run and it sounds unbelievable. Cronier going very nicely indeed and Cronier of course uh, he's performed in uh, group uh, racing, Stanley Group N racing and uh, all sorts of saloon car racing, also a stalwart on the rally circuits of South Africa and on top of it all he's also done a fair stint uh, for Toyota in off-roading so he knows all the different facets and will be throwing this baby around as hard as he possibly can. On this uh, Mustang just started now um, coming up the hill. I've never seen so much smoke. I hope the guys have got a lot of tire sponsors down here. Um, I was just got look at all the smoke at the Still start. Still there, line. yeah. <laughs> this is uh, race car 64, Udo de Burgers in the Audi. That's the 5 litre 10 cylinder RS6. 
2010 model. He's about to hit the road as well. Listen to that as he goes in the background. That is a very, very big start as well from him. You could just hear it up the hill. one point nine kilometers straight up and uh, there's one or two bits of road surface that really does take your attention you need to be paying attention all the way through this is jason busterfield and uh, he is in the three liter six cylinder f type s so a lot of the drivers this morning for the first couple of practice rounds or practice runs uh, just focusing on uh, getting getting that racing line and um, making sure that they uh, just you know get themselves familiar with the track again obviously uh, having run here last year Jacques Wheeler in his McLaren this is the 570s this is a 2017 model oh, it's a beautiful looking beast isn't it unbelievable and uh, here's another one another McLaren starting uh, starting the race Arons de Priya and that's also a 2017 570s you want to drive it and ride it as hard as you possibly can, but you don't want to lose this one, do you? Absolutely not. On here, uh, the guys, uh, a number that was thrown around this morning is that there's uh, about a hundred million rands worth of cars in Aina, the pits this morning. Aina, Aina, Aina. Rob Gearing in uh, the BMW 4.4, that M5. He's got uh, the racing seats in the front there, and that is a beautiful car as well. It, and it sounds big as well. Lovely to look at. Beautiful lines on it too. And he's picking some good lines early on as well. Race uh, car 60 rolls up. That's Isak Spies. Here's McLaren 3.8, also the 570S. But this is a 2016 model. The M5 powers its way up the hill. Uh, interesting about the... Oh, nearly nearly losing it around that corner there. Uh, interesting on the stop uh, start line this morning. This M5 obviously has a start-stop technology. So as, uh, as he's waiting to pull away, his engine actually uh, stops and then starts as he pulls away. Yeah, I've got it in my car and it sometimes can throw you. You've actually got to keep the foot on the accelerator if you want to do that. I, I'm sure I was there when he pulled off earlier and I must say it, did, it caught me by surprise too needs to actually have it off i would imagine for uh, this particular yeah, event interesting i uh, wonder if he actually had the settings wrong yeah i would assume so i, I can only have assumed so i was also caught unawares clive Haldenace in the bentley this is the gt continental 12 cylinders one of the bigger engines out there beautiful sound to it again it is just phenomenal to hear Ah, here we go. Here's Mr. Lindenberg, Mr. Uh, Fast himself, because he is absolutely mad about speed. And uh, this is 55, Peter Lindenberg, in that Ford Savage 660. Listen, Anya, I, I couldn't oh, believe oh, it when oh. I saw it. I couldn't believe it when I saw it, a bucky going up the hill. But um, <laughs> very impressive and also not, not too far off with the times, eh? Look at that. He throws that thing and waited for it as long as he could and then let it go right hard. And uh, taking a very tight line there too. This car is also lovely to see. This is uh, the uh, Range Rover, the Land Rover 5 litre 8 cylinder Luma CLRS 2015 model. It's Jason Evans who takes it away. Yeah, Jason uh, definitely uh, got the, the colour scheme right on this car. We're definitely not going to miss it this weekend. You have to put that in the garage and then put a sheet over it. Otherwise it wakes you up at night. <laughs> Absolutely. Next up in that uh, beautifully turned out Porsche, this is Sun Moodley in uh, the 991 GT3 Cup. Oh, uh, hello. The tire there on the way up. All three of them, I think. Saved a little bit of rub rubber on the inside line, though, I think. Uh, that's, uh, that's uh, according to the briefing this morning, a bit of a warning to the guys. Um, so if they uh, have another incident like that going up the hill, they'll definitely get a firm talking to you. Well, uh, they trying to get as much advantage out of it as they possibly can. Piet van der Walt. And uh, this is uh, the BMW M3. Yeah, Beautiful think, shape. Uh, one, of the, one of the first ones of this newer shape and that uh, aerofoil on the left and the right. I think the guys are going to slow this uh, actual heat down now just to get the tyres back in place. Well, that's as it stands at the moment. It is still Rechard Roots with that clocking of his of 46.047.
and uh, that is in that Nissan 3.8 GTR R35 of his Davi Ulefir is uh, just three hundredths of a second further back and uh, he races in a beautifully turned out Jaguar the F-Type Coupe SVR but uh, as we told you slightly earlier today Andre Besaidnot in the first of uh, the practice runs clocking a brand new record for the Samola Hill Climb as brought to you by Jaguar and uh, 37 odd seconds just magnificent and uh, this is fierce competition cars here reaching up to 250 k's an hour although I think that Besaidnot got it up to past 300 at one stage in that Nicholson McLaren of his. He is very very um how can I say what's the right word? He's uh, humble about the fact that this uh, car that he's going to take out today is going to set a new record. Andre uh, must humble himself. 52 hits the road. That's Manoj Maharaj. And he's taking his 996 GT3 up the road. And this is Paul Munro. Another one of the lovely uh, beamers turned out. Another one of the M3s dating back to 2001. Making a lot of noise as he pulls away. Obviously a, a, a crowd favourite. Lots of people can identify with it because so many of the petrol heads would have either driven one or desired one. Absolutely. That Porsche being thrown around. Maharaj not sticking around at all. There goes a Subaru, as a uh, more commonly known uh, in, in petrol head terms as a Scooby. A Scooby, eh? Yeah, that's it. Okay. BMW taking some very smooth lines through the uh, sweeping bends. And here's a big favourite as well. This is Rui Campos in his Porsche 911 RSR. 1969 model how's that and still going as strong as ever and that martini livery it's a beautiful turnout just reminds me so much of one of my boyhood heroes carlos reutemann in uh, his brabham which was the same color they are very uh, well-known livery and um, andre uh, andre Biden was running in a uh, similar livery yesterday as we take a look at the marshals here they work tirelessly and they here just because they want to help and be a part of it and they do such a really good job it's such a pleasure to have them and we thank each and every one of them that's claire vale one of uh, the ladies who's out there in uh, that subaru of hers She's just taken to the road and uh, this is gilles missing in the mitsubishi this is the evo 3 20 year old car this year how amazing is that and also still going strong just listen to that pull away. Subaru going up uh, the hill very nicely too. This now is uh, Shane Naidu. As he hits the road. These are the earlier runs, so people are as... Uh, Fani was saying a little earlier just making sure that they get the right lines and by the way you would have seen that shadow flitting over the tarmac that's uh, people from uh, the guests etc etc from Samola being taken for a flip over the area it's a beautiful flight Darvi Bad in the Lotus with the Honda engine the Exige four cylinder 2.4 liters Oh, I, I, could actually feel, I could actually feel the, the floor vibrating <laughs> as that car pulled away absolutely and so uh, they, they would have felt it in Japan as well on the other <laughs> side of the world, I'm sure. Making them proud. Oh, look at this line. Uh, this is unbelievable driving. Very tight around that corner. You bad as tight as he could be on that uh, right-hand sweep as well. Let's take a look at the line here for him. Yeah, he's riding it as tight. I think he's giving it on. So no, this is pretty, not a practice run at the moment. He's looking to go as quick as he can. Look at that. It's but how beautifully does it not handle up the hill? Definitely. Well, this would be a beautiful picture for any speed cop if he saw it coming <laughs> over the hill because <laughs> it's uh, Jacques Bauer in uh, the escort, but it's a quick little escort that. And if it comes over the brow like that, the co cop would be thinking, ha ha, here's Christmas money. He's no way that he's going to be inside the speed limit. Look at this little thing go. It's gorgeous to see.
In the meantime, back at the start line again, Christopher Leeson in his Ford Focus. That's uh, 2.3 litres of engine in there. Also good to see the Fords back uh, on the hill. And 41, Ian Stevenson. That's uh, the Honda Civic. This is actually the previous uh, Honda Civic. I think it's the 2016 model or build, or build year. There's actually a new one that's uh, just been launched as well. Very, very, very quick cars. And uh, that vehicle actually holds a record uh, around the Nerd... Is it Nerdenberg Ring? Or Nürburgring. Or? Yes. Nürburgring, that's yeah. It. The Honda is going nicely. They've done a wonderful job with the fairing, etc. That's sitting very low. I don't think that he's going to have any drag problems, that's for sure. He's handling it very nicely, too. Oh, look at this conquest coming up the hill now. Yep. There's one or two of the little bumps and humps that you see. You've got to be very aware of where to hit them so as best not to lose your traction and keep the wheels on the ground at all times. Obviously, one of the biggest challenges. Uh, the racing drivers spoke to me about is that this is not a race track this is just a normal uh, just a normal road that uh, has been that they've been using for for this event and um, that being said the road surface obviously is something that they need to take into consideration as well local lass tanya watts in her subaru impreza and uh, she's also a big favorite around here listen to this thing should not be allowed. It's probably public indecency as it makes its noise like that. Struggling for traction there on that uh, pull away. That's probably one of the biggest secrets con uh, conveying all that power to the wheels. Watts is a local resident, Tira Neisner, and she's been leading the charge for women in the King of the Hills since uh, her first outing in 2014. And uh, she competed in her first one in the Audi RS4. But then she switched to this full race spec 2010 Subaru Impreza WRX STI, which she also competes with in the modified saloon car races. Here's another lovely look as well. Isn't it beautiful to see? These are cars that you would pull up next to at the traffic light. This is Don Carlos da Silva in the TT 1.8 four-cylinder. Smooth as she goes tell you that uh, Davi Hubert has now clocked the leading time 40.9 seconds Anton Grunier is in second in 41.67 and Roots has been relegated to third place there it is as it stands at the moment so Hubert slots really straight happy. into that uh, leading position at the moment remember though it's uh, early days lots of uh, water still to flow into the sea but Hubert in that Lotus Honda of his the exceeds with the 2.4 litre engine oh look at this boy that is gorgeous. A big thumper, that. Peter Lindenberg going up the road there. 41 is uh, Ian Stevenson in his Honda. It's the Civic Type R, would you ever say that? No, not at all. <laughs> Completely modified here. Right, so uh, Steve Kimpton also out on the road. This is number 34. Jonathan Leith and the V8 Masters Ford. This thing makes a massive noise as well. This is the Rush Mustang. Lots of changes. Willie Hepburn, one of the all-time greats of South African motor racing, has slotted into third place right now with his clocking of 45.96 seconds. And again, relegating Roots to fourth place, Darby Ulifir. As, uh, as the result also been nudged down to fifth. That V8 Masters car, man, oh man, that is that sits all over the road. It's as big as what the road is wide. Absolutely wide. The guys using this uh, third practice round to uh, make sure of their racing lines, getting uh, the quickest line through the corners and uh, holding up to that qualifying round later. Mm, Sean Dumini in uh, the Ferrari 488 GTP. That's uh, 3.9 litres worth of engine and eight cylinders that he's trying to contain under that bonnet. And I don't think he's doing that very well at the moment. They want to climb out of there right now. Franco De Matteo, the Jag with a Ford engine. Six litre V8 supercar. 
so a big beauty that. Look at our, that hugs the road surface. Sitting right on top of the tarmac, no airflow in there. Van Zimmeren. Race car number 29 is the Nissan VR38. 34 Skyline. Oh, ho, ho. Listen to that thing go. Don't shoot, we'll come peacefully. <laughs> Just waking up all the spectators that. Uh, well, oh, almost losing. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was fighting at that time. Look at it. Yeah, sideways. Flying. Absolutely flying. Breaks on into the left-hand sweep. Yeah, things are definitely getting serious right now. Tuka Mekanokos, the Mercedes-Benz AMG. That's the DTM 55. Look at him go. He's throwing it around. You're right. The, the gloves are off. The boys are ready. No, the guys are eating up right now. Rocking and rolling. Sun Mugli again rocks up with the 991 GT3 Cup. That is beautiful looking that... Uh, AMG silver chrome look on it. I hesitate to ask what that would have cost. And the polish upkeep is even worse once you put it on. Ricky Giannocaro in his BMW in 3 GTR. There's a very good look at how bouncy some of the road surface is, and you've got to be very careful. Ooh, hoo, hoo, went to second. And he battled to keep it there in line. That wanted to get away from him as early as second gear already. I think uh, getting downforce. Uh, this is uh, Peter Zeli in his uh, Toyota MR2. I actually interviewed him uh, two or three weeks ago at Swatkoops when uh, they were preparing for this event. Um, had a lot of problems with setting up the suspension uh, on the vehicle. Uh, spoke to him this morning and hopefully they sorted it out. Eh? Well, you'll find out in a second or two. It's Jeff Mortimer. His Nissan 350Z lining up too. Okay, let's look at what ZD can do. As he goes up the hill, he has Mortimer back at the start line for him. Mm, straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's trouble. That's trouble. He missed it completely. That looks like it's a bit of drama. That wasn't exactly the start he wanted. The transponder sits inside the car and then the transponder reader is about three or four meters just after that start arch. So you want to go there. You want to get there as fast as you possibly can. But uh, he looks like he's battling just a little. Only it worked like that. Hey. <laughs> yeah, you didn't have to drive past all the people. Coasting like he's doing, yeah, there's uh, probably something pretty wrong. With yeah, that, that um, the smoking there also doesn't look good to me. I think that there may be some trouble there. Oh, that is really hugs the road, too. That's hardly any bounce on it. He's taking some good lines there. Is uh, Adrian Dalton in his M3? Ooh, that is a big noise. Massive noise there, the crowd really appreciating that one. That's Franco Scribanti in uh, his Porsche GT3. Crowd really roared with that one. There's another one who's so low to the road and hugging the road surface all the way through. Kyle Mitchell in his Nissan R35 GTR Nismo 2017 model. He's also brought the crowd to its feet. Yeah, Franco uh, had a very good day yesterday with uh, Classic Car Friday. Uh, but, uh, his uh, race face is definitely on today and not wanting to really do interviews but in the case of the guys taking it really seriously as well. Martin van Zummeren lining up the Nissan R34 Skyline now. That car already 16 years old this year. Bell and Ross, by the way, doing our official timing. And uh, while I'm talking about that, we do need to express our grateful thanks to several of the sponsors. Obviously, uh -huh, look at him drifting the tail to the right and then picking it the other way. As we were saying, our grateful thanks to our sponsors Jaguar, who since the first Jaguar car was produced in, way back in 1935, have been a part of racing in and out of it several times, but they seem to be back to stay now. Then Samola Golf and Country Estate, one of South Africa's most desirable golfing destinations, Prime Security and also Mitchells. And let's not forget the two editors, Covert, the boutique Luca liquor distributor, and then CX Tippers. So our grateful thanks to those sponsors. Without them, it would just not. Okay, so this is Valadim on the on the track at the moment. Valadim, obviously, uh, defending champion in his class. 
price. And uh, the guys from the BB Major Group uh, are doing quite uh, well. Next on the line to Edrich Sears in his Nissan GTR R35. Interesting little fact. Uh, Personal mate, uh, ah, congratulations, Hedrick. Hope you guys are very happy together. Right, now the pressure's on. He needs to impress his new fiance. <laughs> Not easy to do. Although when it's young love, it's easy to do. Come to think of it. <laughs> Quinsley Sale from uh, in, in his Nissan, the GTR, six liter, three point uh, three point eight liter, rather six cylinder. Aggressive looking cars. They are going up the road. Beautiful weather again, and we're edging up to that 25, 26 degrees again. And uh, you will have noticed that this is in Leisner. Oh, that uh, number 16 car from Sale is flying up the hill. So we were saying to you with uh, the terrible amount of fires that they've had here, you would know that thousands of people were displaced and hundreds of homes lost. But if you look at the countryside, there, luckily there's been, oh, that's trouble. He's blown the engine there or something of the sort. This is now going to halt proceedings for a little while because he has to pull off. And uh, they'll stop everyone else coming through until this car has been cleared. Let's uh, just remind you again, Davi Ubar is uh, our race leader at the moment. Davi Ubar with his Lotus Honda, the Exige. And uh, I say race leader, but it is um, it is racing. It's uh, practice racing at the moment, but don't believe that the boys are not as serious for uh, as serious can be. 40.9 seconds. Anton Cronier in second spot with that 41.67 seconds. But Helen Bart has now got himself up into third. Martin van Zummeren in uh, that beautifully turned out uh, R34 skyline of his. We heard it when, ah, oh, there we go. He's got it going and he's probably going to trundle up the hill very slowly. Make sure that he can clear the route for everyone else and then they'll get going. I can tell you that those folks there all making use of uh, the liberal liquids on sale here because it's warm and it's edging up to a good day. We were talking about the, um, the fires and you can just see the countryside has recovered immensely well in the almost year that it's now taken. And uh, it's good to see. We really are thankful for that. I hope the sun, blo sun blocks out. All the guys are enjoying yep. the the South African sun. See what the girls' T-shirt says. You can't buy happiness, but you can buy race cars. I <laughs> <laughs> love it. And the young man on the right shirt said, "Run your car, not your mouth." <laughs> yeah. well, getting things going again. Marshals are very, very serious about controlling the safety scenario here, and so they have to be. I think that's uh, Darren Goodman's in his Nissan. Here's uh, what most people were looking forward to. Ian Schofield in the Ford Duratec. My girl. Uh, absolutely amazing to see these cars go up the hill here in Nasna. Remember, there are three classes. Class A, the road-going saloon cars and supercars. Then Class B, the modified saloon cars. And Class C, the single-seaters and sports cars. Race car 14, also halfway up the hill now. Darren Goodman's in that GTR R32 of his. Next one of the single-seaters. Piling on the pace, Shane Halberg. This is Garth de Villiers in the Reynard Volkswagen. This is a Formula VW. Have we only seen exciting races in uh, the Formula VW in the last years? Compact little car and you can throw it around. Make sure that you get the most out of the road surface. Francis Cousins in the Lotus Toyota. Look at the downforce around that corner as he opens up the throttle. Unbelievable performance on these vehicles. Working it very nicely, very tight on that line. Hardly any deviation in the steering wheel there. That was the smallest little twitch. And because the car is so small, he makes it through there without doing any steering or virtually any steering at all. Virtually straight line through there. 
just look at all the people down the pits there. It's an absolutely electric vibe down there this morning. Um, uh, the guys uh, preparing the vehicles, all the pit crew working very, very hard. All the behind the scenes things are on here. The guys uh, all set up last night. As soon as that classic car Friday uh, ended, the guys had to pull out and all these vehicles pulled in. We had a huge traffic jam logged all the way down to the main road getting all these vehicles in last night and then had to set up the pits, build floors and get everything ready for this uh, main event today. Well it certainly has been worth the wait and uh, been preparing for this for months have most of the teams and the drivers. The King of the Hill is obviously the most prestigious title in the world of hill climb events and only six drivers have earned this crown so far here on the Jaguar Somali Hill Climb. And now for the second time in the ninth running of the Somali Hill Climb, entries are divided into the three main classes. Next bunch of competitors on the way after that little slight interruption. There's more of the single seaters making their way up now. Now these marshals doing a fantastic job getting uh, track ready for the guys who get up. And um, yeah, it's all volunteers as far as I understand. Yeah, quite right. And they do an incredible job. But let's be honest, they also love being involved. They love being a part of it. That's uh, number eight leaving the line, Siaponga Mankonkonwana. And uh, that's the Volkswagen Forza 2014. Let's watch him as he works his way up this 1.9 kilometer circuit of theirs. This is Stuart White in the Renault. Five liters. Beautiful car. The marshals are holding him, holding him, holding him. And there he goes. a big noise and got up to speed unbelievably quickly the acceleration of this vehicle is frightening to say the least 
the Volkswagen on its way and Sia Bonga doing a good job. Oh, hello, hello. Two, a two little twitches there. Fought the car, he wanted to leave him and he got it back under control. This is Robert Volk in the A1 GP Ferrari. This is a frightening thing as well. Here he goes. Oh my word, it's lovely. Struggling to get off the line there. I think the rubber there, with the amount of rubber they've laid down, may just be a problem at this stage. Watch him go. There you can see it's not a normal Ferrari circuit that uh, the old uh, F1s would be riding on. That is all smooth all the way up. He's got a good line going. He's worked it up now. The speed is going as well. I think that uh, may be uh, Anthony Ashley in the Honda. Now, I beg your pardon, that's uh, Wayne Plitt in the Lotus, the 211. Meantime, the Ferrari is working its way furiously up the hill. Here and comes the big gun. Yeah, here is the man who set the new record up the hill earlier this uh, morning. A side note. That's the Gould Nicholson McLaren NME, the GR55. Unassuming little car. It looks unassuming, but um, you cross it at your peril. I never judge the book, eh? Yeah, absolutely. Good start. Kept it in line as well, as long as he possibly could. It wants to go either left or right with all that rubber at the start line. And I'll just look at his head bobbing around in that thing. The force is absolutely amazing. Yeah, you're so right. Look at that. Little move from left to right. Lined it up perfectly. In and out. So fascinating to watch how the various cars with their different uh, ways of accelerating and under braking pick up the different lines. Very interested to see what this time is going to be. Again, those marshals doing a phenomenal job. So it's beside note. Oh, look at that. 37.556 seconds. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, he is flying that thing up the hill. So, uh, beside note, crashes back in there. Look at the differential in uh, these times between uh, the lead time at the moment. Almost a two-second difference there, and that is just phenomenal. And Robert Volk himself breaking, uh, becoming only the second man today to break the 40-second mark. So, 39.552 for him. And now, beside note, sets another mark up the hill. Tanya, I'm actually uh, getting a bit worried about the time, seeing that this is only like the third practice round. Yep. So you wonder what's going to happen if they start setting it up slightly differently. It looked like it was Anthony Ashley now who was working his way up the hill. So this is uh, the state of affairs at the moment. But side note, breaks through uh, the 38 second barrier yet again. And Robert Volk makes his presence felt with that sub 40 clocking. And uh, it is unbelievable to think that uh, the Nicholson McLaren is that much faster than the A1 GP Ferrari up the hill. Yeah, and Valhalla bought in uh, the fifth position at the moment. Thank you.
guys, this Amole Hill Climb has finally arrived and today it's Classic Car Friday. out the live stream on our website on YouTube and also on Facebook don't miss any of the action we'll see you guys soon
As we start now with the next practice, practice number three. This is an astounding car. This is car number 84. The amazing thing about this is this is uh, the BMW Hybrid i8 and you hardly hear it. It whispers up to the line and quietly whispers away and you really don't even, you only know it's going once the wheel starts spinning. It's an incredible car to watch. So they start from the back in our 83, Julian Janser van Rensburg in the Volkswagen. That's the Golf MK1 2008 model. Makes a lovely sound. This uh, also reminds one of the uh, the golf racing class. Popular bump and ride stuff from uh, the late 80s and the early 90s. 81. Janser van Rensburg. That's his uh, Sirocco MK1. Look at that Beamer going straight up the hill towards the finish line now. Beautiful handling. That thing looks like a shark on wheels. This is Garth McIntosh in his Ferrari 458. 4.5 litres, that's eight cylinders underneath that red bonnet. Little Golf doing a great job. Lovely lines he was taking. This has been one of the head turners in the pits so far, but then any Ferrari that looks remotely red will turn heads. Sirocco, that old shape powering up the hill. It's a 1974 model, believe it or not. The Ferrari now, a 2007 model, so already 11 years old this year. Cars will roll away from the start line now, thick and fast as they go along. Up next, this is one of the Jags. This is the E Base, brand new to South Africa. This is Ciro de Siena. And, uh, arrived on South African shores last year, was launched right here at the Jaguar Samola Hill Run in spectacular style, dropped off by helicopter. What a way to make an entrance in a country. That's Pierre Bester. It's the Alfa Romeo. The Julia QV 2017 model. As we go back to De Siena. Almost at the finish line now. Very solid lines. Look at that. You can't shake that thing. It looks like one of those cars which even if you tried to roll it, you wouldn't look at the stability of it. It's lovely. Hardly any weight to throw around there. That car is so well distributed weight-wise. Look at that. In and out. Left and right and through she goes. So, Bester in the Alpha. And very pleased and uh, elated to tell you that uh, the voice of uh, racing in South Africa has joined us again as we take a look at the early leaders, uh, Garth McIntosh, the 47.8 clocking in car number 79. That's that Ferrari 458. And I was telling you that Roger McCleary has joined us, the man who's been doing duty up there. Oh, the first thing I've got to ask you, Roger, is how are the air drums? Because you're sitting there barely two or three meters away from the start line. I've just, uh, you know, most of the people I know in motorsport over the years, half of them are dead. <laughs> when you took that seriously, and I know why. I've lost an eardrum today, I'm sure of the noise. <laughs> We're in that little tent, you can see that. Right there where the man is standing with the blue shirt. Yeah, that's right. That's that's and the noise coming past when they get off the line. Right. Here at uh, uh, Record Roots going, now he's one of our stars, and they're real quick. I mean, this place has got GTR Nissans. They've done <laughs> big things to these Nissans, and they do fly. They really do. Record Roots powering away from the line, and that car, look at that too. That is a beautiful looking vehicle as well. So, uh, this is uh, one of the first Penta Alfa Romeos, uh, the Julia QV, and uh, they were going very nicely early on. Car 71 gets the OK and nods away from the line very cleverly. 
and nicely. And that's uh, Piet Portrieter. He ended up 40th uh, in the early practice with a time of 50.404. You know, they took those engines are actually, I, I understand, assembled by by uh, Ferrari. That's certainly Ferrari's had and the new Julius and Stelvia. My word. So there you go. But it's always been very closely related through all the years of motoring Fiat, Ferrari and Alfa, hasn't it? Oh no, the technology is all together. Yep. There's no doubt about it. But Ferrari's sort of special, you know. And they've, they've made their name, as you know, only of, uh, of Formula One racing. If they didn't do Formula One, sometimes they threaten to get out of it. <laughs> That's what sells it, because no, really, they've bought the whole scene. Yeah, and it's one of those, give me my toys, I'm going to leave, but we all know that they want to play. <laughs> You've got it summed up, that's <laughs> it. And if you don't do it my way, we're going to put Mercedes doing a bit of that. Too, but exactly. Right. Francois Cowley is out there on the route, as is right now Derek Dearlove in uh, his Jaguar. He's a technical manager, Jack. So he knows the thing or two about this is the first corner. Now they've got a gun at the, uh, the bottom picture coming out of there, he'll be behind that bed. Here he comes out. That's Derek Deer Love coming out. That, that Jag is flying on that beautiful looking coach. Here's also another beauty, the uh, noble Ford, the M400. And that's uh, Faroz Ibrahim, who uh, made a big noise going away from there. He's got it nicely under control early on. And you talk about setting up the cars. How do you set it up for this? Because I assume, not knowing anything technically about this, is that you've got to set this up very differently to circuit racing. I would think so, yeah, but this whole piece of track here, yeah. as you were saying yesterday, oh, okay. it changes all the time as the temperature and mm. the rubber goes down. You know, they're using different tires. But just let me tell you something about that Noble. That there's it in the top picture. Every single Noble made in the world, other than the first prototype, was made in, in St. Albans and Pee. By, My word, really. By Jimmy Price. That's high tech automotive. That's a nice Roger, I actually sometimes think that as South Africans, we don't A, know enough about what happens in motoring in our country in general. And then secondly, we're not proud enough because in a lot of areas, we've been world leaders when it comes to automotive. No, I mean, you take Formula One with Rory Bird, with, yeah. the, uh, with the Formula One Ferrari, you've got uh, Murray. Yep. Uh, with, uh, with the McLarens, he did the uh, Alphas. The design the Brabham's, yeah. No, we've, we have had... We, Honored in this country, we've got engineers second and the Basil Greens and all the others who've done great things with motoring in this country and, and they don't get any assistance from any official body. Yep. You know? There's these beautiful Jags, they're really are nice and they've, they've hired a couple of people to drive in. That 66 is... Yep. Uh, it's Darby Willifield. Uh, he's the after sales manager and he does go drive somebody. This is the F-Type Coupe SVR. It's a 2018 model so it still smells of leather on the yeah. inside. Yeah. Darby's been there a long time driving turbocharged, supercharged, supercharged cars, the whole two. What is really interesting for me is with the Jags, and as we watch the Audi now, this is uh, Udo de Burgers in uh, the RS6. That's a 10 cylinder car. What is interesting for me though is if you like, take a look at these, I, I, I shouldn't call them luxury cars, but effectively that's what they are. You don't see them going over the bumps, whereas you see the cars, the, the single seaters, and it is, it's really, it's rumpled carpet underneath. <laughs> no, it is. You can, look, you can set those up, sport of course, function, you know, and it gets firm. And so, but of course, a racing car. Yeah. You just want to just stick to the road and be quick on acceleration. It's a different thing to sort of. But that out is a bit. Uh -oh. A beautiful something's happened. Oh uh, yeah. Now he's got a problem of some sort, and they'll hold uh, race car number 63 here, Barry Ingle, in his uh, Rush Mustang. He's been a racer for many, many years. GTRs a lot. Whole family involved. But this RS6 is a beautiful looking motor. Car. I mean, a V10 motor. Yeah, right. We're not going to see too many of those. Enjoy them while we got them. We'll all be in little twin cylinder 500 short, I'm sure. <laughs> puttering That's along a, uh, at 80k's an hour. No, no, funny enough, oh, no, they're not puttering anymore. You know, they all fly along. You can't believe. No, he's got a problem. I must say, for, for entertainment value, on the other side of the scale, with all this big noise, I have enjoyed that BMW hybrid because it kind of whispers away from the line like that. I almost, it feels like it's underwear falling away from a body and all of a sudden, bam, there it is. And it's got power from the world. You know, electric motor has got full torque from yeah. Rev1. Yeah. And you don't have to oil it, change the oil. There's a, it's a whole thing. With, they've got a little, it's actually a hybrid, as you say, with a... A petrol in a little three cylinder 1500 with with about six liters of petrol so if the battery runs down yeah. you can get it mm -hmm. the i3 they had here that's pure battery yeah and they all go well i mean you don't know the difference when you drive it awesome. so 
They're expensive, well, there's no doubt about it. I mean, this technology is coming, everybody's building electric cars. I mean, whether it's here for South Africa, I don't know, quite honestly, because you've got to charge them, and maybe the government loses money on tax. You know, you can That's tax the petrol. other thing. How yep. can you tax electric car? Yeah, very much so. Well, they're going to char they're charging us so much for electricity as it is, so possibly, you know, that's why. But here is, uh, there's one or two very interesting thoughts when it comes uh, to Jaguar's thoughts on uh, the, the electric side of things because they're talking about the fact that by 2020 Jaguars will, will most probably also be mostly hybrid no, well, and uh, fascinating thinking in the end. No, no. Look, hybrids at the moment are more expensive as more technology goes into them. But in time they've got to come down in price and the whole thing's about pollution, etc. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, here's a little update for you on that and this makes fascinating reading as we're still waiting. Starters orders here still for uh, the beautiful blue uh, Rush. No, that's, he's, that's Barry Engel. He's, he's the one up the hill that's... He, oh, no, he's in... Is that the Rush? Oh, that's the Rush. Yeah. yeah, that's the Yeah. So the Jaguar Land Rover has committed to the future of motoring, and by 2020, every new Jaguar and Land Rover they say that goes on sale will offer some degree of electrification. And uh, the car leading that charge right now is the all electric Jaguar I Pace. And that's a beautiful looking vehicle, and it just shows you where motoring is going, isn't it? No, there's no doubt. Look, at governments need that with pollution and all this type of thing. I mean, every time they have a pollution meeting overseas, it means more tax was really. But, uh, I mean, the electric cars are the way to go and they want to talk about dropping diesel though diesel's got clean etc so the day debate will go on for a long time but absolutely yeah. factories have to do it all. no doubt about it yeah. the the one thing that i guess is going to then be a byproduct and i was reading the most fascinating thing about that and we chatted about it yesterday very briefly is artificial intelligence and where that leaves unskilled workers particularly in in the car factories that we run in this country Oh, I mean, for Volkswagen, they've employed, re-employed the people that have the same line. They started assembly lines with the Polo, v, Polo which they export. Uh, they had 375 robots. I mean, it's scary, any electronics coming and they actually destroy the labor movement. I mean, you take all the things that you can do in your iPad. I mean, you need yeah. people to do all these things. So they, you'll, you won't need showrooms, you won't need salesmen. And it's, it's actually scary to hear what these guys are doing. But I don't know if they've sorted it all out, but that's the way the world is going. I mean, what can we do? It is very interesting times, and we live in interesting times. That's the fascinating thing. What we thing. really want oh, is a good V12 engine, and that uses a lot of gas and goes well. You know what I mean? <laughs> and sounds brilliant. Back to the 1970s exactly. in the States, right? <laughs> We've come from that school, and we want to drive our car. Look at this car. Beautiful. No, beautiful. beautiful to watch. And he really does throw that around, uh, does uh, Barry. Here is, uh, I think that was Aaron Stapria who was lining up that McLaren 570S of his as well. Yeah, it is indeed Aaron Stapria. Oh dear. Uh, Gordon Murray was a designer of those, of course, early days. He uh, used to be a big friend of George Harrison, did you know that? I didn't know that. And when they used to go to Grand Prix, they'd bring the three-seater one with the driver in the middle. And at the Grand Prix, George Harrison used to circulate and show the car. Oh, Believe no I saw it down in Australia. That's yeah. amazing. Oh. George Harrison, of course. Well, you know, there may be people listening to us who don't know who the heck George Harrison is. Yeah. No. <laughs> Unfortunately. No, he's a Beatle. <laughs> <laughs> and not that type of Beatle. No. The all-time great Beatles, of course. Now, this car to me is an absolute beaut as well. I looked at that in the pits. And I promise you, if you look at that vehicle, that BMW, and your mouth doesn't water to drive it, there's something wrong with you. They've got performance out of those BMWs. I mean, they're magnificent cars. Those six cylinder motors they got that they have a BMW club days, you know they have their racing yep. series and they are so quick those cars. In long distance racing, club racing not they're very, very good. So if you've perhaps just joined us live here on our live streaming on whichever one of uh, the various platforms you're watching, a hearty big welcome to you. Really good to have you along. This is one of I think it's only four female competitors. That's young Paige Lindenberg. So you go, ah, oh, Lindenberg, the Peter Lindenberg, quite right, it is yeah. Peter Lindenberg, and that's his offspring, and she's almost as quick as Daddy, and in fact, I think it's somewhere she may be quicker than Daddy. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> no, but I'll tell you what, though, he was on the, uh, they held on the podium, I think, last year, the year before. Father and daughter, I think it's an all-time record in the same class, she was third to him. That's amazing. Both on the podium together, it was actually good to see, because Peter's gone through operation, you know, he's declared twice in powerboat racing. He's had knee ops and hip ops, you can't believe it. I think he had nine losses. He says, as long as I keep my foot down, I'm okay. <laughs> you know, there's a Bentley. Where do you see Bentley Continental GTs racing? Racing, yeah. Well, only at the Hill there's Run. Peter. And here's uh, Peter himself, of course. This vehicle is a astounding man. That is one big piece of machinery. And look at him go. He's battling to keep it on the road there as they go away. 
now he's got it under control and uh, that is that big Ford Savage 660 eight cylinder five liters of pure unadulterated raw power look at him he's fighting it all the way up there here's another beauty as well you know very different but uh, uh, it's a very uh, sedate car but wait you see how it goes and man. how you hear it as compared to Peter's car listen and he's got a new line you see straightens out that corner from the line others go on the left hand side of the road but I mean that Peter drove it up here it's spectacular yeah. you know it's, it's a shopping car you think <laughs> <laughs> until like, yeah, until they get here. Until Jason they're... Evans is the man in that beautiful uh, Range Rover. Up next, it's Sun Mootley in the Porsche. That's the 911 GT3 Cup. Lindenberg making sure that he gets the right line. But boy, he throws that thing around, doesn't he? No, he said he does. No, Peter gives it horns, really. And, and the uh, the Sun Mootley one, actually, he used to claim he had the fastest Porsche in the country. I think so. Toby Fent arrived with Carl Army. And yep. said, but Sun Mootley, those are very special. Munro in his BMW M3. That's a, a car that is already 17 years old this year and still that shape is just, uh, I think they call it the dolphin shape, don't they? But uh, that uh, Range Rover is terrific, eh? I mean, awesome. It's no, really awesome. awesome. You don't expect to go like this. That is Piet van der Walt in his M3. 16 years old, in 2002 model Bessie Mutters, Bessie Bester Mutters on the back there. Look at the beamer go. Let's check this line. Roger McCleary. Oh. You know, you come in the, this is the your secret again. The, the faster ones here we do about 232. Is the speed you come out of that corner. The, the whole thing here is to get off the line. If you mess up the start, you can't make it. But that coming up to get speed up that hill, which is coming down under this bridge that the Cassidy and Ali up here. But to get it, you've got to come out of that first corner flying. You've got to be full balls coming out of there. One of the first Porsches uh, that now make its run up the hill here. Here's a very interesting looking car as well. This is Daniel Zini in uh, the Subaru Impreza. And this is what you would uh, drive. You'd end up in wherever with that park next to you in the road. Uh, not these ones anymore. They would be great cars. You know, they won the World Rally Champion. Yep. And then they sort of went to sleep and you don't hear them. They were such efficient cars. With a flat Rui Campos in his Porsche 911 RSR. He's got a very good car. His kids are in the racing too. He puts a lot of load and very talented. He's, uh, he's driven all these cars from the sports cars up there. Rui's really good. And a martini coloured car. Just Say how you recognise martini. Stunning. Yeah. Stunning. It just, you can uh, see it from miles away. Yeah. Okay, he really comes to that and, and the road is bumpy here. Yep. You know, somebody yep. was saying yesterday that are you going to rush the outside? You've got to laugh. It's a bumpy public road. There's no safety before. You can see tires. Live with it. Live with it, chaps. <laughs> There's Claire Vales, Speed Queen. And Queen of Speed here in South Africa. She does a lot of drifting. V8 racing. She actually won a V8 race against all the, the heroes there. There's Claire Spons about that. Look how that uh, Continental car was sitting, that was gripping nicely. That's a beautiful ad for Continental because that was going nowhere. There's one more of the, of, uh, the uh, Jaguars. And they are beautiful looking. Oh, that's the, that's the after sales with Bob Murphy. 66 is Darby. And he's won it. Here's the Hells, the land speed record. It's having a percent of 294. Oh, I think they set it up down at... Uh, Mafeking Airport, I think. Oh, 294 okay. in the Jag, he was part of that team. How is that? So, now you know something that you didn't know before. 294 k's an hour. That's uh, highly, highly impressive. When you, Arnold Chester was saying he's the Grand Marshal. Arnold's been in racing since the 60s. And um, he was saying, this is like a circuit. These corners are like a circuit. You know, you normally think a hill climb has got lots of hair. But this is flowing corners, and you've got to get those corners absolutely right. I think the line is so important and you've obviously that's why there's so many practices practice rounds six of them because I think you can play around and then eventually click on to what you need to do to do and you haven't got much time no. 1.9 case you do 40 odd seconds and the, the man who will see this now Andre Bazzone who holds the record in 37.1 seconds uh, has just done a 37.6 so he just came down like five seconds Sorry. smashed it today this car I love to see this is uh, Jacques Bauer 
and his little Ford Escort. There's a shot that we had of him in the earlier run where he kind of brow, he crested, uh, crested a, a hill like this and went down. And I said, it would be a traffic cop's dream to see one of those come across the road and say, come here, pull over. I want to know what you got in there. <laughs> <laughs> and those cars, remember the old 160 Sport, but those cars are rear wheel drive. You know, yeah. The they very much in demand for classic and racing. You people come from overseas to see if South Africa's got them around. And then they buy them. Yeah, they want the front wheel drive, they want the rear wheel drive. And that's one of them from Red Car. Lovely looking at it. It brings back such fond memories. I was only eight when those first sort of hit the road. They were gorgeous looking though. And, and there was something very special about it. It's a compact little shape and I think you can throw it around a bit. There was a car down, they were saying the other day, I think they saw one in Sage for 175,000. And when the 1600 Sport came out of Sage for <laughs> now the price again. Arnold, start collecting, boy. Yeah, you should start collecting. That's the scary thing, hey. No. If only you, you knew at the time. They straighten out these corners, you see. They've got to get a line. You've got to be very accurate. You've got to be quick as well. And off the line, you've got to be fast too. Ford Focus going. That's a beautifully coloured car. It's lovely. It is nice looking. Okay, see how they straighten this out. Hickey's, he's got his own line coming from the second. He's going in there quickly. And then now he starts to floor. Tight in and you, you taps all the way around the corner. That decides your speed coming up that hill. That's uh, Civic 41 Ian Stevenson in the Honda Civic Type R. That comes almost with all the things to do. Never discount a Honda. They can as well. Do you know what I found amazing? I was lucky enough to drive a Honda Ballard for a time. Uh, a Honda Prelude, rather. Really? And uh, the best brakes I ever had on any car. No, best brakes I ever had on any car. It was fantastic. No, they are. They make great. They make good cars. Yeah, that little Ford piling on the speed there as well. I love how he throws that in and throws it out and then straightens out as he goes through. He's very able to do use the weight of the car, which in, in some of the, the, um, the, the flatter cars, those ones, the, the, the single seaters, not easy to do that. And you're not designed, they're not designed to do that. I understand that. It's just good to see how someone is able to use the weight of the car. Yeah. Isn't that the little old con? Because they've been in rallying and racing in this car. They're like a benchmark. You know, they kept racing, guy. They won rally championship with a good old car and bulletproof engine. Yeah. Those things, which is them. Go forever. No, they do. They re that's their reputation. When the oil runs out, eventually you have to smash it to death with a <laughs> with a baseball bat. Otherwise, it will never die. Willem Bowen flying up the hill in that little compress. That's father and son. He's the father. John is the son. In a little escort. I think that's Tanya Watts. She's terrific. She does big life. animal welfare down here in Nasa. Very big on that. And uh, she, her normal uh, old... Uh, trick was always wave at everybody she drove over and she'd give another <laughs> here's another fly here's one of the fastest here Anton Cronier there he goes Anton Cronier I think he was second fastest this morning but it all changes as the day so of course it does and it, and it really changes massively so uh, Tanya Watts piling on the speed there she's been leading the charge for women in the King of the Hill since her first outing uh, four years ago and still leading the way there's the, the, the renowned Willie Hip. That, red, that green arrow is to tell you where your spot was transponded for time. It's really the red arrow. Yeah. That's good old Willie. Seven litres of pure Chevrolet powder. Look at it. Body gets a little bit. Willie Hip in, in July will be seven litres. I mean, he's he's joking. My and he still flies a lot. He really does. No, Willie's full value there. He really does. He and does. full value, eh? Absolutely full value. He holds absolutely nothing back whatsoever. Here is Ian Stevenson in that, that uh, Honda Civic of his as well. Yeah, I think that's a Mustang, that one. Yeah, that's is one that a Mustang? Ashley Mustang. The, ah, uh, okay. The, uh, what they call V8 Master. They were built by Owen Ashley in his workshop down in Florida. He made something like 400 racing cars in his life. Rally cars, he did four-wheel drive for Toyota. And uh, this is one of the uh, Charles Arkins were involved with him down there. Isn't that lovely? Made from scratch by our boys down in Cape Town. You forget what we've got in this country. It's brilliant see that we've got here. It's gorgeous looking as well, isn't it? It's a That's beautiful... Steve, uh, he's actually in the Steve Kimpton. He comes from uh, Tucson, Arizona. He's a professional driver. He does driving instruction in Arizona in the States. It looks lovely. It's a beautiful looking car. Well, both of them, they are just gorgeous looking. And Owen actually got a Spirit Series going with two liter Opel motors. He's, he's just you know, built 25, 30 cars in the drive. It's really fantastic. So that's uh, Gronier now, who has stopped the clock up at the top of the hill at 42.067 seconds. He slips into first place, and look at that, 76 years old, Willie Hepburn, 44.0 seconds. Man, that is quick, and the boys are logging the times.
but they'll be chasing the time that was set as the fastest in practice three Andre Besaino in that GR55 Gould is at 37.556 seconds so he's about he told me last night he'd do probably get two seconds under in this very special Gould and the McLaren engine got but he's down to 30, I think he's 37.6 now. His record up this hill is 37.1. And the car he did at Dolores actually in, uh, in Aussie for classic car race. And they found some rust in the barrels. Oh boy. I don't know what oil he's using, but and they <laughs> cleaned it up and got the engine together for him to race in this train. Yeah. <laughs> that was Sean Dumini in that Ferrari. Man, that makes a big noise. That 488 GTP is a pounder. Look at it. Yeah, you'll know Sean is up He's a man, a Ford man in Tronga. Sean Doom, he's been racing. He's had a couple of hard planes and that, but his boy also races. He's very much involved. He's a terrific guy. Okay, that's where you've got to get it right. You make a mistake here. You've had a couple of goes down the yep. tree. You can see the no runner for safety here. You get into the trees. I mean, this is how it goes. Easy. Oh, listen to that thing. That shocks us. I tell you what, we are 50 yards away. And we could feel that in the <laughs> studio. Oopsie, hello. Oh, oh, oh again. Oh, oh fuss. And that was <laughs> laid down rubber all the way through. They Look at that thing. The spoiler's broken. The spoiler's come off. Come off yeah. Yeah. It's oh. like a side, side run in front of his mud guard. That's the boys from East London. The Wade Zimmerin. from Zimmerin. Yeah. Oof. He that, is fighting that thing. He is. Uh, he's broken a couple of eardrums as well. The, the noise that bah, that it gives every time. Oh, that's gone God. off. So at least one part of the debris is left behind. And from Zimmer and oh, slippy. Oh, look, lost it again. He's right on the edge here. In fact, he may be past it. Yeah. Is that, that's oh. spectacular. That's what we want to see. <laughs> Let them all slide. It's great. Lovely. That is great. So let's see. Oh, uh, Van Zimmeren, look at that. 45.958 into uh, fourth place with that ride. But boy, oh boy, it was as tight as it can possibly be. That was very, very tight. So uh, it they're was spectacular. Key. His dad's coming a little later. That's uh, Martin Van Zimmeren. He'll be coming up the road. Now, those boys, they got their, uh, their Nissans, these GTRs from his land. There he is, by the way. Yeah, he smashed into fourth place, but boy, that was like a heavyweight clash. Two heavyweights smacking, you know what, out of each other. But uh, here is uh, Tuka, Tuka Mechanicos, yeah, in the Merc. That's a chromium car, you know, that's not, that's a chromium wrapper. That's probably the fastest Merc in this car. Look at it, it's just wheel spin. Hello. Look at that. Look at the amount of rubber he's left. He got that, couldn't get that under control right up into third gear. Bonnet's gone. Bonnet's gone. He's decided to go air cooled. Air cooled. <laughs> <laughs> now that is the hottest Merc in this car. He's got everything in that car. Has to get. Ricky Giannocaro in his M3 GTR. This is a six cylinder, 3.5 liters. The whole family of Giannocaro's they race. This is the one son, father, and two sons. They get power out of those BMW. They're fantastic. Get really good result. Now they've turned the whole BM scene into a racing car they love, they really, and do good times. Oh, here come, this is, the heavies come from Cape Town. Charles Hubert and the Lotus Honda. There's good, now we're going to see his. That's called the Elise. He actually is the, holds the fastest lap at Kalani. And they're going down the back straight next to the trees, the mountain straight, at about 280. Oh my word. And I said to him, so how do you get out of that two liter Honda motion? Get over seven hundred. Just working on for five hundred. I mean, to be <laughs> seven hundred horsepower. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Adrian Dalton in his Beamer. It's oh, another M3. Isn't that a happy day? Didn't get. So I must have been in some of the earlier runs. Of course, the, the, the temperature's gone up now. It's probably around twenty-eight. It's slowing the times down a bit. You know, they'll wait a little bit later now after you see the times come round. Right. Yeah, the tarmac may also just be a tad on the loose side as well, and yeah. some rubber at the start there, etc. So you're not, it's probably not ideal conditions right now as it is. Here's another beautiful looking vehicle. My oh, this thing looks phenomenal. That's Frank Escobar. He's won more times here at the hill than he will. That's got to that you're talking thousands. But I, I don't think, you've got to balance that out. They can turn it down on turbos, etc. But a thousand becomes too much. Yeah. You, you, you know, you come out of corner and you're trying to manage the car where you should be bulleting it. You're so trying to fight the car. I was going to say, you're fighting the oversteer and the, uh, the understeer on the other side, and it really is dramatic to be able to do. That, by the way, was the Porsche GT3. This now is uh, car number 20. This Martin. is Martin. This is the old man now. Let's see if he can kick the youngsters backside. Let's have a look. That's sorted. That. Listen. 
Hop, hop, hop. As you kiss down and does the job. Nice quick. Oh, nice quick. Very smooth as well. If you break down with a heavy truck in the in the border region, he'll come and pick you. Is he the man? Well, it's a good name to remember then. Remember, if you're going to break down in that part of the world, put it in your cell phone. Martin van Zummeren. So there's 17 Van Allen Bart in his GTR R35 Nissan. Oh, that's a monster as well. well he hasn't been seen for about two weeks. Thing, you know, every grain of tar on the day. He won here in, I think, 2011. <laughs> Texas. That's a very special car. That was that aerodynamics was done for Pikes Peak in America. Ah, uh, yes, time. yes, yes. So they've got the wings and that front. That's the business on that car. In the spheres, the Nissan GTR R35. He's also up and away. Oh, oh dear. hello. Gone, it's gone. Oh, dear. Um, which mechanic left that loose? Yep. But anyway, he got away with it. He's gone off the car. Luckily, because he was going so quickly that that just absolutely ripped off and disappeared. It looked like a piece of paper. Oh. So, so uh, uh, set back there. Disaster now, air, cool, averted. Yeah. yeah. Disaster averted for Spears because that could have got stuck on the on the the, um, the windshield, and that's the last thing you want. So they're going to have to get the uh, marshals just to clear that up, as well as some earlier. Oh. Debris from Van Zimmeren's car that's come off. We saw what Debris did to the Ferraris last week on the, the circuit, the Formula One circuit. There it is. Sure that's the one piece. And there's the other one. No, so our cameraman, our cameraman's the bad luck there. We found out what the problem is. Quinsley Sale in the Nissan GTR. He's up next. And he's been doing this climb for quite a while too. Oh, they come with a special car. You know if you lose and don't do a good time. Here's another look at it. Roger. Oh, no, it hit a tire. It hit a tire. That's what it was. So, not a mechanic's fault. In fact, the whole of that front fairing almost came off altogether. Oh. That's what it is. And he's treating the bonnet with total dignity. <laughs> Just dragging it away in a piece of carbon fiber. Oh, it costs very little, man. What oh, the heck, man? 100,000, whatever. <laughs> Martin van Zimmeren then comes through to clock 41.986 seconds relegating Anton Gronje into the second spot for the meantime because uh, the faster men are still coming up. Franco De Matteo is in third and uh, boy, there's not much to choose between these first four men at the moment. So the no. competition is tight, tight, no, tight. No, it is very tight. Now you're down in fraction of a second here. When it really gets hot, we'll have it out tomorrow afternoon, is the probably they go for the top ten and the king of the hill. And, and honestly, they all come down to have great fun. And then you see them start to drive easy and they get really serious. When, when the C for serious button goes on. C yep. for serious, boy. <laughs> Quinsley Sale now finally does get underway. If they, they've taken all the debris away on the route, and up they go. Oh, that's beautiful too, as that harks the tarmac. Look at that. So little bounce there, and you can tell this car has been set up quite nicely for this. Lovely to see. See, the Nissan crew were here in full force, and they were boasting about their lovely cars and their great drivers and they were having fun out there that's for sure this is Darren Goodmans in his Nissan GTR R32 Darren is here for fun two years ago he missed the finish and he was going full ball as it took a, cur a turn and then you get on the gravel roads in the forest oh and boy and he suddenly thought it's finished <laughs> and now I've run out of road and he ended up in the forest in that car oh so boy he comes to enjoy it from his ladder Ian Schofield set up one of the fastest times early on in uh, the MyGirl Ford Duratec. This is the SJ 2018 model, 1.6 litres, four cylinders. But look at this little thing go. It's gorgeous to watch as well. Very good. He was second fastest yesterday in a March Atlantic. Now, Ian puts a tremendous amount into Ford, gives a big prize money, and then takes him overseas to Ford. Star coming line just now, 17 years. Stuart White wins all the Formula Ford races. That's number uh, Shane Helberg. That's his first race he's had yet. Quite and he started racing a couple of months ago. Loving. Shane Helberg then got the Villiers in his Reynard Volkswagen. That's the Formula VW. So nice to see these turned out because that was such serious competition at one stage in world racing, wasn't oh, it? Absolutely. Yeah, that, yeah, that is. I mean, they get very serious about it. Right, here's a that was designed in the 50s, and it still goes, and they set up that record, and they're fantastic. Francis Cousins in the Lotus 7 with a Toyota engine in uh, the uh, 
in the, in the car there. That's a 1980 model. It's never eight. changed. It could be yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. They gripped the road, and he lives just above the circle, at the top of the hill. You have a look at the distance. Yeah. Francis says to the left of that house. So he knows the circle. I think he goes to work down this road. You know, I mean, he must know. Sia Bonga on one one in the Formula V Forza. 2014 model, that is. He's on his way too. Francis is finished. Just around that corner. There's the bonnet lying there, all discarded, and the the right hand side of the road, no one cares anymore. Stuart White in his yes, Renault. Stopped. This is your young 17 year old. They have the same difference. There's a name to watch Stuart White. Very, very good. Is, is that number uh, no, six? Number six. Yep. It is, that's him. No, no, he's in the Renault today. That Renault, that's it. They fly, you know, make good engines, make good chassis. He looks like quite a keen young driver. No, he's overseas, he's yeah, Robert Volk goes away in that big sounding A1 GP Ferrari. That's uh, the eight cylinder 4.5. Man, oh man, does that only make an earth shattering noise. We had the A, you remember the A1 Grand Prix? Yes, of course. All those A1 Grand Prix cars in South Africa, the whole lot, they're the stored lot. in Java. My yeah. goodness. No, I, I won't tell you who bought them, but. It's someone that didn't come with nothing to steal. Ah, okay. Until, you know, it was all sorted out. But we wanted to start, he wanted to start a one Grand Prix and then get hard drive so we could come out here. Yeah. A certain amount of racing and racing and national. We've got great circuits here. And that's the A1 Grand Prix. They put on great racing. One one representative per country. I remember that. And they raced it in Durban as a circuit. They did. Yep. Yeah. It's good stuff to watch. Robert Volk is powering his way to the finish line now. That's Anthony Ashley in uh, the Ariel Honda Atom. He's been an instructor at Nürburgring. Driving instructor, not a bad place to No, no, it's okay to work If you can be an instructor, you know your way around a suit. <laughs> and have a look at the Ariel Atom. The body works inside the chassis. You know, the framework of the... Here he comes now. They've picked it for the lightweight slot. They're lovely looking. Look at the chassis on the car in, the, on our split screen at the top there. That's uh, Ashley. That's Good all it. pipes, aren't you? That's a functional little motor car. I think functional is a lovely term oh. to describe it. It looks like it's functional. Look at it go. Oh. It's getting everything out of it that he possibly can. Good lines as well. Using uh, the... There we go. Oh, hello. A oh, little bit sideways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sardle would be proud. <laughs> or sideways Schechter so, in the old days. Eh? So he was a grand marshal here a little while ago. Hello, we're getting down to the 14th yep. miles, Robert Wall. Robert Volk now almost cracking the 40-second margin there. Quinsley Sale with, uh, is almost two seconds further back. And then Martin von Zimmeren with uh, just two thousandth of a In fact, no, seven thousandth of a second less than that than uh, Martin von Zimmeren. So uh, Anton Cronier is still there with his uh, just a tad over 42. And Stuart White, too, with a very good run. So there you go. Oh, there the you go. Lines That's have been drawn. And the thing is about old, old Martin von Zimmeren, I don't know if it's the Buffalo River water or something. But East London has produced great drivers, the Schechters. Isn't that Even strange? Even pre-war, the uncles and that. There's Jackie Schechter, I always say he's the quickest of our family. There's Jody, world champion, Ian. Here we've got the Van Zoomerans, we've got Darren Goodman. It's just produced it those cars. And they got a great circuit down there. So, we'll continue with our live telecast as we just take a look back at some of the highlights of this practice run. And uh, we'll qualifying uh, yeah, practice run three as it finishes. Qualifying runs get underway this afternoon. Is it now? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Oh, it wasn't that car. Look at that slug. Van Zuman sliding school. He's sliding <laughs> everywhere, man. Every corner he's got a side. When he doesn't race, he teaches you how to ski. ski. <laughs> <laughs> Look but at I that mean, stuff. That is, that is sliding. Like, he's got that power off full step. You know, as we just said a bit earlier, you've got to have the balance between too much power, otherwise yeah. you're just fighting the car the whole way. Yeah. yeah, I think that has to be, oh, it clipped the, the side of the road there too, so I picked up some stones on the side there as well. I think that is probably one of the, particularly with these big bangers, you're looking at the marriage between not having to fight the car too much and not having uh, too little power. power. Yeah. yeah, that's really what it comes down to. So fascinating thought processes that go into this. and. It's been an honor to have Roger McCleary with us again. Roger, it's I been know a lovely honor. Thanks very much. Thank you. Yeah, really How many years have you been involved in? In motorsport? No, no, no. In, the, in this. In the oh, I've done seven of them. Seven yeah, of them. And they've done nine. Yeah, no, I came here. It's, it's been. And you know the, the show that went on for nine? It's been yeah. And with that ravaging fire that you did, that's like, 
the ravage of putting back last time, but the ravage in fact, when you come here, you can have the restored down. Beautiful. And they're selling trees to people at 120 rand. They're going to reforest the whole place. So they've done a great job, John. There we go. There's the um, bonnet again going. There was just what gave rise to this, though, is was that clip as he went. Oh, here's Bork. Look at him fighting that thing as well. Now, that's not something you see often either because that. The engine was about to climb out over his back here, onto the front of the car. My word, he's that's a little star that he's from GTR. And the back wheel is shaking around. That's very firm suspension. And you're of course sitting on the floor of the car. You're, you're right down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that oh. takes it out of you. Yeah. And he's back uh, uh, Physically, how hard is this to do? I've, I've never done the car racing, no. but I'd say physically after a while. You know, okay. bikes are physical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. The, the heavy weight of the buck putting it over. No, but, but in particular this ride, uh, how hard is this? Because it's over too quickly or is, are you up at that point where you're sweating profusely when you come, when you finish the run? Because you're concentrating so hard. You are concentrating. Yeah. You forget about your, your own little will. Mm. But you know, as you said to the one down there, the best only is the offer. You're only going to do 22 k's the whole weekend and he's bought 100,000 rand for the tyres. And that'll be that for the tyres, eh? Uh, 22 <laughs> they must be a more you've effective way. You've done 11 and you've done 100,000 <laughs> rand with the tires. Uh. Think carefully about your tires. unbelievable. Well, I worked it out at the end of the day yesterday. They were uh, 414 runs up the hill yesterday and they completed 873 kilometers of it. That is remarkable if you think about it like that. So you know the, the marshals, it's the MG car club do the marshalling on their white oval. They're all in the 70s. Yeah. And every year they come and they get those cars out. When they're starting to run here, they get them out the pits onto the line. Slick. Like and those that. pits are packed like three, four behind each other. Very really good. They do a wonderful job. Really well, it's been our honor to host you then as uh, we get to lunchtime and uh, we'll have some incredible stuff for you to watch as well. You've seen uh, the Jaguar trick driving, if you can. That Wait, is. Are you going to show? Yeah, yeah, breathtaking. We spoke to Kateri Grano. He holds the world record. He did a loop in a Jag. Uh, I think in China 7.
this or do you do a lot of work? We're off to the Jaguar Simola Hill Climb. I'm rolling in the coolest compact SUV. This is the Jaguar E-Pace. Off we go. We decided to take the alternative route, but luckily this car has got a really good sat nav, so we didn't get lost or anything like that. You guys see why they call it Map of Africa? I am so excited. I've never done it before, it's my first time. So I'm really stoked about going there and seeing what it's all about. Thank you, Simona Hill Climb 2018, and I'm uh, here with Johannes Janssen van Rensburg, and uh, he's pulling a lot of uh, attention. Johannes, what's uh, the reason for all this uh, eyes on you this weekend? Well, uh, we, we brought this car. It's a Nissan Leaf uh, Nismo race car, and uh, it's import from Japan. And it is actually the first time in history that uh, electric car will compete in an MSA sanctioned event, and being Simona Hill Climb. Okay, so that explains a lot. Um, Johannes, it's definitely a looker. It, it looks very nicely and, and definitely stealing the show uh, from the Nissan side maybe a little bit more attention than the GTRs. Yeah, yeah for sure. You know, it's something uh, that most people have never seen. So that was the intention. Bring it to Samola, show a typical petrol head event that we can still have fun in an electric way, you know, maybe a, a more green or zero emissions type of uh, way. Yeah. Listen, uh, can you tell us a bit about the specs and uh, horsepower and all that sort of stuff because obviously now this being a, 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 a battery or electric vehicle tell us about that okay so this car is a monocoque body built from carbon fiber so it's very light uh, total weight is 930 kilograms um, it's been converted to a rear wheel drive rear mounted engine or electric motor but it uses the stock standard uh, powertrain from the road car so 80 kilowatts to 80 newton meters of torque that's basically it other than that it's uh, the only thing from the leaf other than uh, the engine is the lights the rest is carbon fiber. Okay, so where's your charger? The charger is actually at the back. So it takes about eight hours to charge overnight. And uh, we had to do a lot of uh, organizing to get the charge point here, three phase. And, but it's charging and uh, we'll, we'll keep on running. Okay, and on a full charge, how long can you run? Well, on this car, because it's got a reduced battery capacity due to weight, it can only run 40 kilometers on a, at race pace. So for Samola Hill Climb, it's perfect. Uh, we need about 25 kilometers. The benefit is on the downhill coming back, I can regenerate. So I put some energy back in the battery. So we should be able to run. That's unbelievable. Thank you very much for your time and all the best. Your first practice run, you happy? Yeah, it was fun. Uh, it's very loose still. Um, I had a wheel spin of about two seconds, which I didn't expect. Um, but yes, uh, keep on improving as we go through the day. All the best for the weekend. Thanks, Fanny.
Guys, it's the Jaguar Samola Hill Climb 2018. I'm standing here with Pierre Bester. He's from the Penta Motor Group. They're running the Alpha Julias this year. Pierre, uh, great to see Alpha back at the hill. Yeah, what a wonderful car. It's lovely to be here. I'm looking forward to good times today. So you've just been up the hill for the first practice run this morning. How did it go? It went very well. We're busy still uh, checking out uh, what setup we're going to use. And what mode are we going to go, dynamic or race mode? So the first run is basically just to feel the track, see how it is, look at the conditions, and then we'll start working from there. Okay, Pierre, so it's, uh, it's been a, a big build-up uh, to the preparation for this day today. How long have you guys prepared for this, for this event? Uh, me personally, six months, but I've only had access to the car about uh, six weeks ago. And we had uh, three outings to Swartkorp, so we did some testing and all that. And now today we must put it into practice. Your uh, partner in crime here, yeah, Pit Bodenost, how's he going? Uh, Pit Potgitter is, uh, yeah, yeah. Pit Potgitter is doing well. Uh, I think my very first time ever on the hill was a 59, he did a 57. So he's on the right track and I will see him improved a lot today. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Guys, the Jaguar Samola Hill Climb 2018. I'm with Peter and Paige. Father-daughter combination. Peter, how's the preparation gone? Yeah, no, we've done okay. We, the car should be good. Had a good day yesterday. We did Classic Car Friday. Paige, myself and Dirk Fenter, our partner. Uh, that was a really good day for all of us. And yeah, hopefully we can keep it rolling. Awesome, man. Paige, tell us about the car that you're uh, going up the hill today. I'm in a Shelby Super Snake 750 horsepower machine. So it's got a lot of power. I'm going to take it easy the first few runs. Just find my feet, see how the track is and try to give it horns a bit later. Tell us about the competition between you guys. No, no, no competition between I'm driving a bucky here, <laughs> so I'm just going to have fun. Absolutely he, awesome. He did knock me off the, the podium yesterday though in class. <laughs> uh, so there's a bit of a, a thing going on. Guys, all the best for today. Keep it on the road, keep it safe, and we'll see you at the top of the hill. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks a lot.
see that angle is right. Now I'm saying that the angle is right.
I've been doing a few runs, passing your runs, to try and learn the course over the last day or so. So I kind of got my head in where it was left and where it was right. What I didn't account for is there's some some quite you know big up and down holes on parts of track that I'm not using when I'm going up at speed on four wheels. So I hit one of those. So we nearly went over. That was about a third of the way up. So I've remembered that for next time. I'll steer clear of it. And I kind of picked up a puncher um, up towards the end. I could hear the the air whistling out of the tyre. So I dropped it just short. So I didn't actually do the full course. I was maybe 30 or 40 yards short of the finish. So. We can, uh, we can do a full run this afternoon. Awesome, Terry. Well, just unbelievable. Tell us about the pressures in the tyres that you have to that you have to run. Sure. So the pressures here is well over six bar. So they're so so hard. The reason for that is the tyre would just fold on itself. Um, the weight of the car all on that one point. And I'm running on the sidewall. If you have a look, I'm using that much of the tyre on the side. It's worn out already. That was a new set. So uh, they're just going to last the full run, I think. Okay, so that's absolutely one set, uh, one set per run. One set per run, yeah. Two tyres will be worn out. The treads are perfect. So if anyone wants to buy some second-hand tyres, the treads are amazing. The sidewalls aren't very good, but the treads are awesome. Thank you very much. We look forward to the next run. Thank you. See you guys. Guys, the Simola Hill Climb has finally arrived and today it's Classic Car Friday.
Check out the live stream on our website, on YouTube and also on Facebook. Don't miss any of the action. We'll see you guys soon. So it's uh, coming, drawing to a, to a close, uh, Classic Car Friday at the Jaguar Samola Hill Climb 2018. I'm here with Peter Jenkins. Peter, how's it going so far, man? Oh, we're having a great day so far. Thanks very much. Uh, we've just finished the class finals, and I think uh, uh, we've ended up second overall. Uh, Ian Schofield and myself in the march are having a good dice with each other. Franco's way ahead. So now it's up to the main event while we're here, is that uh, top 10 shootout and uh, hopefully we can get a, a, a podium on that. So the end of the day, Classic Car Friday, Franco, congratulations, well done, man. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's the start of three days. This is uh, nice to get this one under our hat because we've had a lot of bad luck, a lot of big accidents. Luckily, my guys are all still married. The mountain art, they haven't been home now in a row. I think that they haven't been home for three months amongst all of them. So, just great to get it under our belt. And it was quite close in the end. And these guys were going. So, it was nice. Awesome. Well, congratulations again. And looking forward to seeing the rest of the weekend and all the action coming. Yeah, it's only just starting now. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you very much. Richard, uh, welcome and are you excited? We are very excited to be here again for the fifth time. Um, we had a lot of fun years gone by. Um, we've once before got a first place. Okay. The car is strong, we've just uh, redone the motor and rebuilt front suspension and um, we're happy to be here. Walking up and down the pits, not a lot of ladies that, uh, that we find here and uh, now I've heard and seen that you've competed in every event since it started. We've been in every event and it just gets better every year, it is fantastic, it really yep. is a good event. Awesome, tell me what is uh, the car that you're driving? It's, um, a, it's a Barson special, so a guy by the name of Talonor Barson created 12 specials, a special number 12 in the mid 60s, early 70s and this is based on a Honda S800 chassis. We go as fast as we can, they're old cars, they're classics, um, they're not specially built for the hill climb, so you know, we just do what we can with them and have fun doing it. It's a classic car Friday, are you excited? Yeah, it's going to be a good year. It's a 67 Shelby, built by Classic Creations in America. It's running close to a thousand horsepower, supercharged. Really? It's going to be fun. <laughs> so, uh, the last of the practice rounds has just started. That is that beautiful Beamer. That's the BMW Hybrid of Gordon Nicholson speeding up the hill. That's car number 84. So, they start in reverse order. And uh, they're up on the hill and away now. It's ideal temperatures probably around about now 
actually maybe not quite maybe it's still just a little on the warm side to get uh, the exact amount of traction that you still need and uh, Fani Scors has joined us again Fani you, I know you've been out there chatting to a whole lot of guys what are they saying about the conditions right now yeah conditions definitely uh, warming up and the guys are obviously you can see it in the times that they're putting up um, the guys are becoming more happier as the day go by well, let's just recap for you, Robert Volk and that A1 GP Ferrari of his clocking 40.034 seconds in uh, the practice four. And Quinsley Sale was next with uh, his Nissan GTR and Martin van Zimmeren in the R34 Skyline. So uh, early times already as we go. Here is the Ferrari as well. That's already on the way too. I have a suspicion that that may be Garth McIntosh in his Ferrari. We'll confirm that for you as we go along jumped straight into our live coverage again after that incredible display of uh, the Jaguar stunt driver and what a driver how he practices that Lord alone knows I just spoke to Terry when he came back off the hill uh, he made it all the way up he, he's very hard on himself he basically put the car down just before the the finish line so he was very upset with himself <laughs> but uh, driving all the way up the hill on two wheels yeah never never been done or never been seen before well i was lucky enough to be in the jaguar tent at that stage and the oohs and ahs of people has almost lost it several times and and uh, they were all obviously scared that he's going to fall the wrong way but um, i to be honest i never thought that he was out of control at all he had that thing nicely under control all the way up the hill yeah he says that he had a that he had a couple of moments there and um yeah speaking to him in the interview afterwards they they completely ruined a perfectly good set of tires going up the hill <laughs> yeah completely gone and you could tell because it left a long trail up the hill there this is Piet Potgieter this is one of Penta's Julia's tell us about this car and how much you know about it yeah I spoke to uh, Pete just in the break after the the previous qualifying or practice round and um, he's actually took off uh, eight seconds of his uh, previous lap so he's doing very well and getting used to conditions and uh, the car so very happy he is with uh, the way that the Julia three litre six cylinder three series from 1989 is going and why not he's putting together some really good performances and uh, in the end he was 36th in uh, that last qualifying with a time of 49.383 seconds and uh, that's very solid only nine and a half seconds off the pace at the front there and obviously you can tell that uh, the discrepancy is very much due to bigger engines faster cars etc etc and that's all comparative because uh, there are three different classes here class a the road going saloon cars and the supercars class b the modified saloon cars and then class c the single seaters and the sports vehicles so that gives you a very good idea of what you're looking at number 67 is travis briscoe in his f type s travis hitting it hard and hitting that line very nicely indeed straight away into the slot beautiful vehicle of Jonas Janse van Rensburg that's the Nissan 80kw the Leaf Nismo RC that car is only three years old 2015 model yeah speaking to Janus this morning um, uh, that was his first proper start uh, taking that Nissan Leaf up the hill and uh, he actually had wheel spin that completely uh, surprised him with this electric car that is amazing the electric cars these days it's like we spoke about that uh, BMW hybrid i8 that kind of just whispers off the line before you even know it's gone the only way you can tell that he's actually connected uh, accelerator and uh, foot is when the wheels start spinning it makes almost no noise whatsoever yeah the eeriest feeling all the cars beating away covering your ears and there goes the leaf with no noise whatsoever Nothing. yeah Ciro de Siena is uh, the man who's up next in his e-pace beautiful little car so times from earlier on 45.888 seconds for Rechard Roots that's in the Nissan GTR R35 let's see what the young e-pace can do this car was launched here just a year ago yeah, made quite a spectacular entrance uh, being brought here in the chopper with a chop very different when it comes a car gets dropped off by ed sparks of james bond perhaps who knows <laughs> the hard-working marshals at the start and uh, that's jason jason basterfield in his f-type s 
celebrating two years now. That's a 2016 model. Yeah, talking about the marshals and the starter, uh, you know, keep in consideration. We worked out last night that uh, we had a total of, I think, 413 yep. runs yesterday. Quite right, 14, So that yeah. uh, gentleman there had, uh, that had the pleasure of uh, swinging that, that uh, flag 413 times yesterday. Well, today it'll be even worse because uh, there's so many more cars, 84 cars in these three classes. And, of course, they would have done no less than five, six, seven runs up the hill. So it's an interesting proposition because uh, what is frightening is the amount of kilometers that they cover as well at the same time. Yeah, and then taking into consideration behind the scenes again, we've got uh, Andy on uh, that uh, jib camera there, on the, with that long swinging arm that you guys can see. Ashley, sorry. Ashley is on the camera and um, yeah, what, he's doing such a brilliant job and uh, spoke to him last night. He was uh, feeling it and uh, his back was uh, quite sore. So by the end of today, they would have run up the hill 1,117 times, uh, which is very interesting. It's a fascinating situation. So that's the story. And uh, I can tell you that the lads were... The, the nice thing is that these boys are here having fun doing it. So uh, the fantastic thing is that they're absolutely having a jaw. There's no other way to put it. They are having fun like there is no tomorrow whatsoever. Loving every single second of it.